Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is another of our meetings about handling family court and public law proceedings of Mackenzie Friends and volunteers for justice for families. Um, so it's probably best if we, we just kick off. Now, obviously, we've got some very experienced people here and less experienced people. Um, as I said, if you, if you don't want to be recorded on the video, please indicate uh, before you, you speak and we'll then switch it off uh, to make sure it doesn't get published at a later stage. Now, um, Emily, do you want to go into this or what? Um, I tried to touch upon quite a few different areas. I know that some people who are here have been um, assisting people for quite a while and others haven't at all, so I didn't want to leave anything sort of untouched really. The first little bit, which is fairly self-explanatory really, and I think I've sent this through to some people, um, it's when I get sort of, when we get cases, we get quite a few come through to us, don't we now? Um, and you're kind enough to sort of help out with people. It's just really for things that you should be, or it's advisable that you ask for cases, just so we don't get to a point where something comes up that we haven't been told of, and you know, nasty surprises, which I think can often happen. So the form, which is sort of three pages here, is just things that you don't necessarily have to go into extreme depths with people because some of them won't, you know, won't feature in a case at all. Um, but if you just touch upon it in the beginning, then you can at least say that you'd ask the people you know, from the start and if they, you know, people lie, and that's <coughs> at least we've covered, our, you know, covered ourselves really, that we've asked them that question. Um, that was really just a guide to just things to sort of skim over. Um, there are a few perhaps that we may well add, but you know, that's, that's the, the main things really. Um, and then with regards to everything, I can focus on this one, if you want to. Yeah. Are we doing all of the things there? Um, we, we've generally had three levels of volunteer. Um, those are people who basically are on the end of the phone and give a little bit of friendly advice on the end of the phone. Through to those people who can be Mackenzie friends whereby you're helping in the court but not necessarily trying to put a case out in front of people. And then you have the more sort of advanced lay representatives who will help put the paperwork together and, and help you produce papers for court so that you can apply for orders and things like that. The difficulty for those people who are not experienced in this area is, as I was told by a social worker, interestingly from the West Midlands, but at times the social workers conspire with the parents' solicitors to undermine the parents' cases. It therefore is well advised for people to be very, very careful about any lawyers that they get involved in because you could find, as we did today, that they act to undermine your case because we had one of those happen today. And it can cause all sorts of problems and I've had social workers come to me as whistleblowers explaining how they have conspired previously with parents' solicitors to undermine the parents' case. And when you have that going on, uh, the only safe way is to do it yourself. I think we must emphasise for anyone listening to this that do it yourself means you do it yourself with help. It doesn't mean somebody does it for you. And I think some people think what we can do is do it for them, and we can't. Uh, what we can do is help people with the processes, and, and tonight is basically about what can be done there. Um, to be fair to the courts, the courts have been much more supportive recently of Mackenzie Friends. The idea of a Mackenzie friend at a basic level is somebody who comes into court with somebody. Now, the nature of the secrecy in the family courts is that it's difficult to get into the court unless you have a, a, a good reason. Um, a Mackenzie friend almost automatically has a good reason to be there with, with the litigant in person, somebody who's acting on their own behalf. Uh, we have recently managed to get um, Emily, in fact, into court where there was a solicitor involved as well because this was the Magistrates Court, the Family Proceedings Court, and we managed to, to get Emily along, which is, which is quite good. We haven't identified the legal basis upon which they agreed that. I've asked them to explain it to me, um, because if they give us the wrong answer, they'll be taken to judicial review. If they give us the right answer, then we've established a precedent that other members of Parliament will be using. So um, it is important to remember that a Mackenzie friend is not a lawyer. So in other words, a Mackenzie friend may not act on behalf of a litigant in person, whereas they can advise people. And they're not entitled to address the court. They have no right of audience. But a, a judge can <coughs> give a right of audience, although we had a situation where a, a litigant in person who couldn't speak English was not allowed to mend a friend with a right of audience, which is a bit of a strange situation, but that's what the judges do sometimes. Um, and similarly, all the paperwork has to be signed by 
the person who's the, the parent or whatever. And it can't be signed by the Mackenzie friend, and that's an important point as well. But we have now got quite good at producing the paperwork. What we do recommend to people is they get the open office suite of software, which is free and available on, on, on Windows, because that allows you to edit PDF files. And as people, those who've got some experience know, all the court forms produced as PDF or portable document format forms. Um, if they're then edited as PDFs, we can circulate them around via email and, and have them checked out, which is also very useful. So that we're working on having a link on the, the Justice Family's website at the moment uh, is actually sort of under construction, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll have links to the main forms that we need. Um, I know that Ian, you do that on your on your website anyway. Um, but through the court website, sometimes it's a little bit extra. It's down a lot. It doesn't help. I've, I've got I have this one actually on this online. So okay. are, are those PDFs or is it? PDFs yeah. and files and in document form. Yeah, but we, we've also got what, what happens is the Open Office has a, a draw format and you can get forms as a draw format. And that's very good because you can then edit the form and save it. And you've been doing that. Yeah. All right. No, and that's, I'm not, sorry, John, 90% of the forms are actually converted to documents which can be sent out as documents and it can be well, that's, that's also useful. That's on the Stop Injustice Now website, so if people want access to that, that's very helpful there. I may have to go and vote in the division soon, I don't know, in which case <laughs> Emily will take over um, the processes. It's also important to understand the, the way in which the courts operate. Obviously, the initial decision is taken as a rule in either the Family Proceedings Court, which can be appealed to the, court, to the County Court, the Court of Appeal or the High Court. Those can be appealed to the Court of Appeal. Now, what we've now got better at is dealing with what happens after that. If you get permission in the Court of Appeal, uh, which you're obviously not guaranteed to get and they tend not to give, then you have to go to the House of Lords before you go to the European Court. If, however, you don't get permission to appear in the Court of Appeal, you, you arrange for us to visit the Judicial Committee of the House of Lords and ask for a letter which says you've exhausted domestic proceedings. I've explained that on that's, that's all within here somewhere as well. Now that's quite important because it means that you, you, the fact that you haven't got permission to appeal in the Court of Appeal doesn't mean that you can't go to the European Court. And there's, there's, there's an important European case which is actually, oddly enough, 38,000, which was a case relating to Dr. David Salvall. Um, now that case looked at Article 3 compliance in child protection proceedings, and Article 3 is about inhuman treatment. And there is a very substantial argument that removing a newborn baby from a mother is inhuman treatment. And the evidence from that is the number of suicides that happen as a result of care procedures. And we're doing some research on that relatively recently because there were a couple of suicides in the last two weeks. Um, the Association for the Improvement of Maternity Services have a lot of documentation on that. And we're trying to put all of that together. The argument in the European Court was that it is acceptable to treat people in a manner which would be otherwise seen as an inhuman manner, as long as it is inevitable. However, most of the proceedings involving newborn babies being removed are in fact not inevitable because the mother could have been placed in a mother and baby unit. Uh, we hope to challenge this process uh, on a number of bases. We've got an interesting case in Nottingham at where we initiate proceedings in the lower courts, appeal them to the Court of Appeal, who, as usual, say, go away, because they tend to do that. We then take it to the European Court. Uh, one of them is RP versus the um, United Kingdom, which was RP versus NCC. That's a very interesting case, because it involves the use of mental capacity legislation, whereby a psychologist says somebody hasn't got capacity to instruct a solicitor. And that case then, then goes off to... Um, you know, the official solicitor who then comes in and concedes the case against the parent, which is what happened in this case. We issued proceedings, we, that, went, that got permission in the Court of Appeal, oddly enough, went to the House of Lords who said go away, but we've got it into the European Court. And the interesting thing, you see, what, what, one thing we're strategically trying to do is get as many cases into the European Court as possible, because the European Court has a facility under Article 39 to initiate interim proceedings, in other words, to stop an adoption. But at the moment, they don't do that. And we'll only be able to get the European Court to stop adoptions going ahead and stop the juggernaut in its tracks 